says Denise Lee, I don't know how members opposite look themselves in the mirror in the morning. Um, I call the Honourable Nikki Key. Look, I, I want to pick up on um, Chris Bishop's speech. And I, I want to just remind us for a moment of some of the moments that we had in the Select Committee. Sir Toby Curtis turning to the committee and saying, could the Prime Minister show some araha? And I do want to address the Prime Minister this evening. I want to address her because she made comments to our previous uh, Leader of the Opposition, Bill English, to the effect that there could be a pathway for these partnership schools if they followed the curriculum, if they had comparable funding, if they had registered teachers. Here is the reality. These schools were following the curriculum. Many schools in New Zealand don't have registered teachers. They, had limit, they have limited authority to teach. These schools had comparable funding. But the reality is, not only did the Prime Minister not follow up on that commitment, but also she never turned up. She morally failed these children. That is the truth here. She did not visit the schools. She did not keep that commitment publicly. And that is not only it. I look at the Ministry of Education's regulatory impact statement, and I object to it. It says that the Labour Party campaigned on getting rid of partnership schools. That is not true. Where were Calvin Davis and Willie Jackson, who both publicly prior to the election said that they believed in partnership schools? In fact, Calvin Davis said that he would resign. This regulatory impact statement by the Ministry of Education is false. It's wrong. The reality is, not only has the Prime Minister failed these children, but also a number of these processes around getting rid of partnership schools have been completely wrong, incorrect, legally improper. And I want to talk you through them. The Minister of Education potentially put the Crown at legal risk by announcing that they would all be gone anyway before he had terminated the contracts. Process error number one. The second thing is, for months on end, these schools did not know what their future was and they were left in a situation of limbo. The next question that I have for the Minister of Education is, not only has this been a moral failure, it has been a fiscal failure. And I want the Minister to front up. I want him to front up on the exact compensation costs for these schools, but also the running costs. Because i tell you what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that actually there are a number of agreements made by the Minister and the Ministry of Education that are not being upheld. So not only have these schools been terminated, but also there's been some deals behind the scenes that are not being honoured. And I think, I hope that there is a journalist listening, I hope that there are some journalists that will try and uncover that and ask the question, is it the case that not only have these schools been terminated, but that we've got legislation being rushed, rushed through when there's a Waitangi tribunal claim being opposed by a number of iwi leaders, but also that it might not be that the Crown is living up to its deal in terms of some of the things that it offered these schools to become designated character. And I would argue not only is it a moral failure, but it is a fiscal failure. Is it 10 million? Is it 20 million? Is it 30 million? What is the cost of the ideological drive of this government to shut down schools that are helping some of our most vulnerable children? Well, we want to know, and we, won't, we don't want this legislation to go through. We want the Minister of Education to stand up now in this House and tell us what is the cost of that, particularly at a time when, when we've got the Prime Minister and the Minister of Education saying to the teachers, there's no more money. There's no more money. There's billions of dollars of surplus and there's been a whole lot of money for diplomats, but there's no more money for teachers. So why can't the Minister of Education then confirm exactly how much it's cost the Crown, the government, the people of New Zealand to close these schools? How much has it cost? And we want to know that. It's a moral failure, it's a fiscal failure, and it's a legal failure. And I want to deal with uh, this Waitangi Tribunal claim. I do have supplementary order papers that try to deal with this. And I would love the Minister to tell this House why it is he needs to push this legislation through this week. Why can't he meet with Sir Toby? Why can't he meet with Dame Ratane? Why? 
Why can't he meet with Lance O'Sullivan? Why? Why can't he meet with these people? Why can't he meet with the claimants that have put in a number of iwi leaders uh, to discuss the issues at hand? Why does the legislation need to go through now? Why won't he do that? And I have put amendments which you know, effectively say, how about we give the respect to these iwi leaders and let that process happen? That is the right thing to do. Forget the moral and the fiscal failure that has already happened. Why are we pushing through this legislation at a time where you have this Waitangi Tribunal claim? Finally, I just want to finish on national standards. Again, as I've said before, you know, ultimately, there are few policies that would affect parents so much, but something that involves reporting about their child's achievement. You would think that there would be huge consultation on that. Well, I've just again gone back to the regulatory impact statement, and it's really clear. It says national standards uh, were um, effectively scrapped on December 13th of last year by this minister. And again, in that regulatory impact statement, it says there was no systematic stakeholder consultation. And so again, I make this point to the minister. Not only is there a moral and fiscal failure about partnership schools, but he has morally failed parents on national standards. Um, I call the Honourable Peony Henare. Um, I am going to um, take another call, but I am going to let members of the Committee of the Whole know uh, that we have had several um, contributions, and the contributions around uh, partnership school schools have been well traversed, and I haven't heard any new arguments uh, from members, and members might want to turn their attention to other parts of Part 1 um, or come up with new arguments. Um, I call Denise Lee. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. I appreciate the chance to take this call, and it is just my second call.